Hey guys, this is Michael with Bleepin' Jeep. Today on Bleepin' Jeep, how to bypass your clutch interlock safety switch so you don't have to push the clutch every time you start your Jeep. Before I show you how to bypass the interlock switch or what's sometimes known as the clutch safety switch, let me tell you why you might want to and why you wouldn't want to. Technically, it is a safety feature. However, old cars, long time ago, never came with these type of features, but now it's pretty standard and anything that's a manual car. You gotta push the clutch first before you can turn the key, otherwise the system's dead. The reasons you wouldn't wanna bypass it are for those safety reasons. It prevents you from doing something stupid and starting your car in gear when you didn't know it. Uh, it also is an added safety to keep kids from playing with your keys and your ignition, being able to start the car, because they probably can't reach your clutch pedal. So there is some safety reasons, however, it was built in from the very beginning by TJ Engineers to allow you to easily bypass the clutch safety switch because there are reasons why you'd want to bypass your clutch safety switch, specifically when you're off-roading. The most clear example is when you're fording deep water. You get stuck in deep water and the Jeep dies, you don't want to hit the clutch and let in a whole bunch of nastiness into your systems. Instead, you just want to be able to hit the key again and restart and if you drive it well you'll be able to continue going either with some gas uh, or you might be able to drive it on your starter probably not in deep water as easily but if you're on the trail and stuff breaks down maybe your Jeep won't start anymore you can put it in gear turn the starter and use your starter to move you out of the side of the trail so everybody else can come through while you work on repairs you shouldn't want to drive it very far that way but if you had to it could be come in uh, handy in a pinch. I was gonna say it would be quite clutch. Mm, I don't know, what do you think? So, that's why you might want to and why you wouldn't want to. Uh, as I mentioned, Jeep Engineers built in a simple system for you to do that on TJ's. Okay, so let me tell you how you actually get this done. It's pretty simple to do because the engineers built in a system for this. However, it's not going to be as simple for me to explain because many year models of the TJ do it differently. I'm going to show you how it works on 97 and I'm going to talk you through how it works on 98s through 2002. However, after 2002 it seems to vary a lot depending on year and whether or not you have a Rubicon. So for everybody, what I'm going to encourage you to do is look in your owner's manual. There'll be a page on how to disengage the clutch interlock or the clutch safety switch because it's made to do this. This isn't anything, we're not hot wiring anything. I'm not doing any workarounds. This is exactly how it's intended to function. So let me show you how it works on a 97 and then I'll show you the option for the 98 through 2002. Okay, so for the 97 TJ, there's actually in the footwell, right next to the clutch pedal, a wired connection, similar to the YJ. If you have a YJ, this might work for you too. You actually disconnect the wires and plug it into a nearby plug that is wired in and built to bypass this switch. You can switch it back and forth whenever you want to. I disconnected mine a long time ago and have no intentions of ever plugging it back in. Just gotta make sure I'm not an idiot and start the Jeep while I'm in gear, unless I mean to. So I'm gonna to try to bring you into this really tight, cramped wheel well space. I got a small flashlight to point out what you need to do. Uh, it's really complicated and tight under here, but come on. Let's see if I can show you what I wanna show you under here. Um, there's a connector that is black right there sticking down with the red line on it that is not connected to anything. That's where standard from the factory, my clutch connector was connected. And then just to the left of that, you see the square with the yellow cables coming out of it. That is the bypass connection location. You simply unplug and plug it in here. I've already switched it and it's quite a pain to do, which is why I'm never switching it back. But it starts there, you unplug it and move it there, and now I don't have to use the clutch to start. Or you can put it back and forth whenever you want to. Okay, let's see if I can get out from here. So 
So that's just for those of you that have a 97. If you have a 98 to 2002, yours is fuse related and it's in a fuse that is in the glove box or behind the glove box. So open your glove box, disconnect, slide out this strap and then just lift your glove box forward. And then down in here, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, you switch around a few, couple fuses. Okay, 98 to 2002. Let me show you this. Now, I have a 97, so my fuse box will look a little different than yours, but here's what you're wanting to do. Also, you can tell mine's been, the previous owner did some weird things. There was some wire bridging some stuff. It wasn't done the right way. I'm trying to put it back together. I need to replace it completely. It's got some burnt going on here. But for you, number 19 is a spare holder. It holds a 10 amp fuse for most of you. I believe for all of you, you're going to take this 10 amp fuse, you're going to pull it out, and you're going to put it down here in the number 20 slot. With a 10 amp fuse in the number 20 slot, it knows, the Jeep knows, to bypass the clutch. And it might even be listed down here on a graph telling you what the different fuses are for. That's a spare in 19, and you move the spare into slot 20, and presto. Now, a couple things I've heard about how that works. I have heard that if for some reason, depending on your year model, the battery gets disconnected, this will no longer work. Something gets glitched and you have to reset it or figure out a way to reset it. So uh, that depends on your year model. So it might be easier to try to figure out a more permanent solution. But for most people, that is the solution. Only a few, um, I have my understanding, have reported that complaint. So that gets us up to 2002. Uh, I'll wrap up everybody else here pretty quickly, but that's how this part works behind the glove box 98, 99, 2000, 2001, and 2002 TJs. Okay, so that brings us up to 2002. For 2003 and beyond, it's now starting to matter whether or not you're a Rubicon or not, and then each year it seems like they switched it around a bit. Some of you are going to use a PDC relay. Uh, right here under the hood, you're going to put in a different relay and it's going to bypass the clutch. Some of you are going to use the glove com box fuse option, and some of you, I've heard it's the 2004 non Rubicon. You actually have to switch around uh, the wire connector like I showed you at the beginning, same as mine. So, in the comments down below, tell me one of two things. Either tell me how you do it for your TJ so everybody else can share and see the, the year models, or tell me if you think this is a good idea. There's a bit of debate about whether you should bypass this safety switch or not. Am I an idiot? I said I'm going to bypass mine and leave it bypassed. Um, what's your opinion on this? Is this a stupid thing to do? It's built to do this, but should we just do it when we're on the trail? What do you think about that? So, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your buddies who have a TJ. Always subscribe, and be sure to check out bleepinjeep.com where you can find out all the great stuff about off-roading with none of the boring stuff. Uh, and I'll see you next time.